Changing your chain is widely overlooked by many mountain bikers, but simply you can save yourself a lot of money in the long run on more expensive parts like the cassette and the chain rings. Using one of these chain wear indicators will tell you how worn your chain is and whether it needs replacing. Alternatively, if you do have a chain that fails, I would never replace it back on the bike. Simply get a new one regardless of how new it was. There'll be a video in the description below which will show you how to use a chain wear indicator. Okay, so we've discovered that my chain is worn. Simply just find the power link on the chain here. You can use these little pliers that make the job a little bit easier, although out on the trail it is possible to uh, split the chain with your hands if you have one of these split pins. Shimano chains use sort of a solid pin that needs a chain tool to split the chain. So here goes, simply squeeze it together and there you go. Removing the power link by hand, simply press both sides of the power link and squeeze together and it should just remove like that. So alternatively, a Shimano style chain will require a chain tool. Set it on the link that you want to remove and keep pushing the chain tool through the chain until the pin is completely removed. There you go, I felt it go. So unwind it, remove the chain there. And then there's your link removed. So here I have my new chain. Make sure you get the right chain for your bike. This is an 11 speed cassette, so I've got an 11 speed chain. Simply just measure it up against your old chain here. So make sure it's correct there. And there you go. So I know that I need to take one, two, three, seven links out of that chain and it will be the same length as my old one. But we're not going to do it that way. Because say you've been out on the trail doing a really cool descent, hit a rock and you've snapped your chain and you don't have your old chain. So we're going to run you through how you should do it when you haven't got your old one to refer to. When putting your new chain on, make sure your bike's in the highest gear and you thread it through the derailleur correctly. So the power link is a little bit loose here. All you're going to do, a little trick, hold the back wheel and put some power on the pedals and the power link snaps together so it's nice and secure. So the next step is to get your chain length correct. You want the chain to be as tight as possible in your lowest gear. The derailleur look, should look something like this. As you can see, my chain is far too long here, so I know that I'm going to have to remove links. Split the chain. Now don't go mad here. Just try and take a couple of links out at a time, because you don't want to be trying to add links back into the chain if you, if you chop it too short. Got it on the link that I want, just two links this time. Start to push it out. Remember that don't push it all the way out in case you need to, to put it back in because you've done it too short. If the link is all the way through, the chances are you won't be able to get that pin back in there. So now using my power link, I'll put the chain back together and check the length of it. Right, so I've took a couple of links out of my chain. Just visually looking, I've got quite a lot of chain here. Um, that's going to mean my bike's very noisy. So what I'd like to do is perhaps remove another couple get the derailleur pulled forward a little bit more and this will keep my bike nice and quiet out on the trail. So there you go, I've removed another link. As you can see the derailleur is pulled forward. There's plenty of tension on there. Maybe you could squeeze another link out and have a slightly tighter chain but I think that'll run pretty well and you'll have some slick shifting with that. However, there is one more check to do if you ride on a full suspension bike. The chain grows when the suspension goes through its travel. So what we're gonna do is let the shock completely down and see if this is gonna lock up. So I've let all the air out of the shock. Now I'm gonna fully compress the bike right down as far as it'll go. So you can see that the chain grows and it does get tighter. I'm pretty happy with that. I could push it a little bit more if I wanted to but I don't think it's worth the risk. That's plenty tight enough and hopefully I'll have a nice quiet bike. You could push it a little bit further and maybe have it like this, a slightly shorter chain, but up here 
that would really be the limit. And you're probably gonna find you'll damage your derailleur or snap your new chain. So there you have it, that's how you replace a chain. And for more videos on GMBN, click up here to check your chain for wear. And if you wanna put some power through your chain, click down here and learn how to pedal like a pro. And if you found this video useful, don't forget, give it a thumb up like. And as always, click on me to subscribe to GMBN. That way, you'll never even miss a video.